President Schaeberger, thank you for your courageous leadership during these troubled times. Tom, Peter, Kevin, Barry, and David, thank all of you for what you do to make this a better country for all of us. I apologize, Mr. President, but I have to borrow a portion of your space to put those boots up there. My name is Bruce Braley, and I'm proud to be a public employee. Please sit down. I don't know about you, but I'm damn sick and tired of hearing public employees blame for all the fiscal problems we have in this country. Instead of blaming public employees, we should be thanking them. Thanking them for getting up in the middle of the night to plow our roads, teaching our children, guarding our prisoners, patrolling our streets, running our public transportation system, cleaning the toilets in our public buildings, and getting up in the middle of the night to battle fires in our homes, our businesses, and to save our lives as emergency responders. That's what public employees do every day to make this a better country. But you and I know that the attack on public employees is really a t an attack on the middle class. That's what this is all about. And as the founder of the Populist Caucus that was set up specifically to fight for middle class economic issues, I'm here to tell you that if you don't believe me that this is a war on the middle class, just look at the Republican budget they forced through the House in the middle of the night just last month a job-killing spending bill that will eliminate 700,000 jobs, according to John McCain's chief economic advisor. And this was an election about job creation? They're cutting housing for our veterans, leaving the brave men and women who fought for this country out on the streets. But did they cut a cent from the Bush tax bonus for the millionaires, for billionaires, for Wall Street and the big oil companies? No way. They talk about fiscal responsibility, but the only responsibility they have is to corporations and special interests. So if any of you think that a spending or budget bill is just about numbers, don't be mistaken. A budget is a moral document. It lays out the priorities of our country. And the budget passed by the Republicans in Washington in the middle of the night when they thought no one was watching was not a budget for the middle class. But we were watching, and we will fight. When you look at who benefits from these budget-cutting priorities, it's the Wall Street hedge fund managers, big oil, and corporations. I don't see any room on that list for a family like yours. Do you? I don't see why, when we have friends who make tough talk about tough cuts, you never hear anyone talking about kicking a kid out of a Head Start program. Now there's a tough cut. The tough cut is telling corporations they can't have a kickback on the taxpayer's dime. The tough job we have is to close taxpayer loopholes. But they won't close loopholes because these same corporations fund the shady groups that help get them elected. So they won't let tax cuts expire for the Koch brothers after they pledge to spend $88 million in the next election. Now this may sound like sour grapes. Let me tell you, I had two and a half million dollars of secret money spent against me in the last election. I know what it's like in a country where we pride ourselves on accountability and transparency in elections to have to face an onslaught of secret money when you don't know where it's coming from. But I will tell you this, it's no secret why they come after people like me and my friends who stand up every day for working men and women against powerful special interests. It's no secret why they want to get rid of us. And that's why I'm so grateful for the help of all of you in this room. As we've seen in Wisconsin, Ohio, and Indiana, working class families have to fight for everything that they get because they tell us 
that money speaks louder than our voices, but we can show them that we have a voice that's stronger than theirs. Our voice when we stand up for firefighters, for our paramedics, for our kids and our families. Because tonighted, together, united, we can speak louder than all of the money they can throw around against us. And that's why I'm here today, to say two words to every one of you. Thank you. Thank you because I know as I look around this room, I would not be Congressman Braley without the help and support of the firefighters who stood by me when I needed them. Not just with their financial support, but with boots on the ground in my district to make a difference in, out, out, in balancing out those powerful special interests. So thank you for believing in me. My support for working men and women isn't just something I talk about. The very first thing that visitors to my office in Longworth Building see when they come in is these boots. And these boots are here as a symbol to me of what working men and women do every day to make this a better country. Now I know about you firefighters. I know how important your boots are. I fill them up every day on Labor Day with my hard-earned cash, and thank you for what you do. But I keep these boots in my office as a reminder of how unpredictable life can be. Because I was a public employee in the 1970s, working for the Pasche County Road Department to help put my way through college. And every year at the end of the summer, I would fix hot breakfast for all the guys I worked with to thank them for giving me an opportunity. And after I graduated from college and went off to law school, the last day on the job, I took my work boots out in the yard, poured gas on them, and lit them on fire because I didn't think I was ever going to need them, those boots again. And then a funny thing happened, that it's called life. In my first year of law school, I lost my father. We buried him 30 years ago today and both of his parents in a three-year period, three-month period. And my mom was really having a tough time. To tell you about the character of my mom, she's 81 years old, and she still works as a public employee, as a substitute teacher in my hometown of Brooklyn, Iowa. But in that time, In that tough time for her, she needed me to come back home and be with her as she struggled with her new life as a widow. And I was in trouble because I didn't have any boots to wear. And these were the boots that I ended up buying to work that summer. And I never burned those boots. I kept them with me and I told my friends, if you help me get elected to the United States Congress, I will wear these boots onto the floor of the Capitol when I vote on the Employee Free Choice Act. And I have a picture of me standing on the steps of the Capitol in these boots the morning I walked onto the floor and was the first person to speak in support of the Employee Free Choice Act. That's living up to your promises. That's giving back to the people who helped you get where you got to. And that's why I will never forget what working men and women, and specifically the firefighters, did for me when I needed them. <laughs> After you helped me get elected, I made three promises to the people I represent. I would listen, I would work hard, and I would get things done. And I listened to you when you needed help to get the aircraft rescue and firefighting standards in the airport's language included in the House Transportation Bill. And we fought and we fought and we fought to get that in the House bill. And we still need to fight to make our airports safer and give firefighters the opportunity to improve the safety of people in airports all over this country. And that's also why I fought as a member of the House Energy and Congress Committee to get the James Zadroga bill out of committee and onto the floor so that we could finally pass it in the last days of the 111th Congress. But my friends, Americans have short memories. After 9-11, we put firefighters on a pedestal like they'd never been put on before because you were a symbol of all that was good and decent about our country at the time of its worst incident of terrorist attack 
in this country. People and communities all over this nation were following all over themselves to honor you. But as we approach the 10th anniversary of 9-11, it's shocking to see how little respect some politicians have for what you do, for your rights to organize to protect your interests in the workplace. And that's why we have to stand together. If we don't, what's the next cherished freedom to go? Federal legislation to prohibit IAFF from gathering in DC on St. Patrick's Day? The Dubliner and the Irish Times wouldn't survive. <laughs> You're laughing because you know it's true. But at the end of the day, the question for all of us is whether we truly believe in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which recognized our basic human rights to organize to protect our economic interests and safety interests. The question for America is, do we honor our firefighters only in a time of national crisis, or do we honor you every day in the way we treat you in the workplace and at the bargaining table? And the question for all of you and all your brothers and sisters in organized labor is, will you continue to stand with us? If you want to see the words made in America again, I want you to stand with me. If you think it's time to stop rewarding American companies that send jobs overseas in a race to the bottom, I want you to stand with me. And if you think it's time to stop giving tax breaks to the rich while we take away the rights of the middle class to organize and give employees, public employees, the right to bargain for better wages and working conditions, I want you to stand up with me and let's stand up together and speak truth to fear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.